We rely on the living God, who is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers. What? God is at peace with the world. He is at peace with you. How can this be? Jesus died for your sins. Jesus was entombed. Jesus was roused the third day. Let's look at two passages in the scriptures that teach the salvation of all and the special salvation for believers. 1 Timothy 4, 9 through 10 and John 3, 16 through 17 reveal to us two large themes in the scriptures, the salvation of all through Christ and by God and the special salvation of believers, those that God grants belief in this life. Let's read 1 Timothy 4, 9 through 10. Faithful is the saying, and worthy of all welcome. For for this are we toiling and being reproached, that we rely on the living God, who is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers. And John three sixteen through 17 For thus God loves the world, so that he gives his only begotten Son, that everyone who is believing in him should not be perishing, but may be having life eonian. For God does not dispatch his Son into the world, that he should be judging the world, but that the world may be saved through him. 1 Timothy 4, 9 through 10 was written by the Apostle Paul, who is the apostle to the nations, those, out, those nations outside of Israel. And this was written after the death and resurrection of Jesus, which accomplished the salvation of all mankind. That's how God can be called the Savior of all mankind, because the work to complete that and make that successful has already been accomplished. Now in John 3, 16 through 17, this is Jesus speaking before his death and resurrection to Nicodemus, who was a religious leader in Israel. Now in 1 Timothy 4, 9 through 10, we can see that Paul says, faithful is the saying and worthy of all welcome. Well, what is that faithful saying that is worthy of all welcome? We rely on the living God, who is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers. Now it's the especially of believers portion of this uh, verse 10 that throws Orthodox Christianity for a loop and they cannot understand it because rightly understood this is saying that God is also the Savior of those who are not believers and this can only be true because the salvation of all is dependent upon the work of Christ and not on any person or their belief but this phrase especially of believers can cause many to really question what Paul is trying to say here I think it's very clear uh, if you look throughout the scriptures, we see that God's scope is worldwide, is mankind-wide. It is not just for a select few. The salvation that came through Jesus is for all, and he has saved all. Let's look at John 3, 16 through 17 for some clarity on this phrase, especially of believers. For thus God loves the world, so that he gives his only begotten Son, that everyone who is believing in him should not be perishing, but may be having life eonian. For God does not dispatch his Son into the world that he should be judging the world, but that the world may be saved through him. Now before we get into the life eonian, and especially of believers, I want us to see something very important here and not skip over this. For thus God loves the world, so that he gives his only begotten Son. If your theology, if your understanding of God does not begin and end and be encompassed by the love of God for the world and for all of his creation, then your understanding of God is going to be skewed. It's going to be skewed in a way where you may not even want to know God, because this is going to turn God into someone who eternally torments people or who annihilates forever. But that's not what this is saying. That's not what either of these passages are saying. This is saying very clearly that God was motivated by his love to give his son for the world. Jesus goes on to say in verse 16 that everyone who is believing in him should not be perishing, but may be having life eonian. Life eonian is the especially of believer salvation that Paul talks about in 1 Timothy 4.10. What is life eonian? The reason that this is such a question is because often this phrase life eonian is mistranslated in popular Bibles. The most common mistranslations of life eonian are eternal life or everlasting life. Eternal life is such a bad uh, translation because no human can have eternal life because 
the adjective eternal means without beginning or without end. And everlasting life, even though it is a little closer to life eonian, is still a mistranslation because Jesus is confining this life to life eonian. That's, that's the phrase he used. Part of the reason why this is important because of the word perishing. Oftentimes, Orthodox Christianity will say, well, if the life is eternal, then the perishing will be eternal. If the life is everlasting, the perishing will be everlasting. But there's nowhere in the scriptures that says any type of perishing or destruction or judgment is everlasting or eternal, but there are eonian judgments. There are those that will perish for the eon or for the eons. So we have to be careful realizing that Jesus spoke here of life eonian. And I think it's important for us to realize that when it talks about the world being saved through Jesus and God being the savior of all mankind, well, what are we saved from? Well, we're saved from sin. We're saved from Satan. We're saved from death. These are the great enemies of mankind that God and Christ have saved us from through the death and resurrection of Christ. So let's try to get a visual of what life Eonian is. Here we have a chart of the Eonian times. Go ahead and look this over. I want us just to realize that uh, there are five eons as revealed in the scriptures. We have Eon 1, 2, 3, which is the present wicked eon that we are currently in, and the oncoming eons, which we are told about in Ephesians 2, 7, are Eon 4 and Eon 5, which includes the thousand years and the new heaven and new earth. So what is the Eonian life that Jesus was telling us about that believers have when they believe in Jesus? Well, that Eonian life is life for the fourth and the fifth eons. And that is granted to them because God grants some people to believe in this life. Now, their Eonian life will begin at the return of Christ. That is when dead believers will be raised, and that is when those believers who are alive will be made immortal. They will be changed from mortal to immortality without dying, and the dead believers will be raised to immortality. So they will be immortal. That means death will have no more effect on them. So in reality, from this point on, they will have everlasting life. But because they get to experience eons four and five, which are called the eons of the eons in the scriptures, that is a great blessing. That is the especially salvation for those who believe. Now, the rest, because God is the Savior of all mankind, and Jesus actually was successful in saving all when he came, the rest will be given immortality at the consummation or conclusion of the eons. So they will miss out on eon four and eon five, the eons of the eons, which are the two good eons. The eons up until then have been bad eons, and the eon we are currently in says that Satan is the god of this eon. And again, it's called the present wicked eon. But when Jesus returns, things are going to change. He's going to transform the world. He's going to transform the cosmos into the good eon, eon four, which includes his thousand year reign on the earth. So those that are granted belief in this life actually have a great blessing that those who are not granted belief miss out on. And this is all part of God's plan. There are two future vivification events when Christ returns and at the consummation of the eons. But then after that, all, because all will be made immortal, all will have everlasting life. And that is based only on the death and resurrection of Christ for all because God is the Savior of all mankind.